Now, if you'd have come up to me last year in the spring or something, and you would have asked me, Nimble, what do you think is the best jet currently at top tier? I, there's a pretty good chance I would have said the JA-37C. It had the combination of good weaponry, excellent handling, and the radar equivalent of the advanced UAV off Call of Duty, coupled out with Mac 2 on the deck, and an instantaneous turn rate rivaling that of Korean War era jet fighters. It truly was this hidden gem hiding at the bottom of the Swedish tech tree. Now, yeah, granted, the MiG-23 could outrun it and make pretty like work of it in a dogfight as well so could the f5e to an extent if flown correctly but none of them had the ability to find identify and track a target flying away from you close to the ground at 40 miles away and that is what made the act being so good back in the day think of it as, as kind of like an assassin right like it could hide close to the ground at the edge of the map watching like the whole battle unfold in front of it and when it found a target it could then sort of move close enough to where the black dot appears turn off its radar and sneak up behind for a quick and true effortless kill. It wasn't really until the F-14 got added to the game that the vegan and yeah I know this version is called the act vegan but that's what I'm going to call it from now on that the vegan saw some proper competition even though the F-14's radar can't track targets that well or at all in most cases when in rear aspect it was the first time vegan pilots had to contend with something that could outperform it in a close end fight and at range as well as getting spotted from across the map. Now while the Tomcat should win against the vegan in a dogfight on paper due to its performance advantage it can be quite a tricky plane to fly in there's a lot of rules you need to abide by when in a dogfight with it. So, if you knew what you were doing when fighting one, you'd actually come out on top more often than not. Due to its insane instantaneous turn rate, if you're aggressive enough in the first few turns and you point your nose at the enemy, even if you don't have a clear shot, a lot of the time less experienced pilots will try to run away, giving you their six, unaware of the fact you can't keep up that turn rate forever. However, now that the F-16 and the MiG-29 are in the game, you now have two aircraft that are superior in pretty much every single metric to the Vigan. Weaponry, flight performance, radar, both of them can literally run circles around you with like minimal effort on the pilot's end. And of course, everyone is flying these things right now. With the way the matchmaking works in Sim and the Vigan C being at 11.0, there isn't a single instance where you're not put up against at least one of these two jets. So the, the this begs the question, how are you supposed to play this thing right now? Well, uh, as I was grinding my way to the new vegan, to my surprise, I actually had a few pretty decent games in this one. So, I decided to make a video and we're just going to go through one of these games together. Uh, and I'll try to explain some of the thought processes I went through in certain situations, as well as elaborate on some of the decisions I made and tactics I used in this thing. So this used to be my favourite aircraft in the game. Just in case you couldn't tell. And the reason for that is because I always thought it wasn't necessarily overpowered. Now other people may disagree, but what I mean is like it has an amazing radar, it can pull mad AOA, it has actually it, it has really good one circle performance, but if you're not careful and you just keep on pulling in a certain direction, you're gonna bleed yourself of energy, right? So if your opponent knew this about your jet, they would exploit this. So whenever you were flying this thing, you'd have to be quite careful not to get yourself into those situations with those types of opponents. So this would lead to like a lot of sort of interesting decision making, right? Because if you turn too much and you sort of end up bleeding all your energy, you're, chances are you're not going to get it back in that fight because the acceleration on this thing is just way too bad compared to you know basically the jets that it goes up against and that was the whole problem that the vegan has is you essentially have a limited amount of moves that you can make in a fight right before you run out of energy and if you don't manage to kill your enemy within those amount of moves you you're gonna have to start thinking of ways to get out of there and in the footage here you can see me head on a mig-23 and this is actually a very very valid tactic in the vegan and the way this works is the, the radar missiles that it gets it gets two of them the rb-71s they're basically the sky flash aim 7 e2 whatever so it's quite a maneuverable missile but it has like no range in fact i'd say the something like an aim 9g an aim 9l actually has more range than these things so what you sort of have to do is you have to like surprise people with the, with the lock and you can see this in the next clip here as well, where I find someone on a radar, I use the TWS to track them essentially, and then once they get close enough, within like 3 or 4 miles, I would then hit the lock button, this, and then fire off my missile, this basically gives your opponent, but well, this doesn't give your opponent a lot of time to react, and this is, if you do this correctly, if you sort of master this technique a little bit, this is honestly where probably most of your kills are going to come from. So after that kill, my wingman who I'm flying with actually called out for a little bit of help. So I end up pointing my TWS over there just so I can get like a little bit of a look of, of 
what's happening and lo and behold I actually see him fighting an enemy. Now I can also see him chaffing or I can see someone deploying countermeasures over there. I also see another enemy approaching him from the north. I obviously, You can't hear the comms but I basically let him know that there's someone approaching. I lock him up on radar even though I don't have the ability to actually kill him from this range. I lock him up to hopefully get him to like panic and move away and it looks like it's kind of working. I'm not actually sure it looks like he's moving away and it works quite well this way my wingman only has to worry about one person the person that he's fighting now I get a little bit closer I try and obviously take him out I'm trying to actually just find him visually and there he is now that's a bad shot if I fired a missile there I would have missed I also missed my gunshots there not enough lead I kind of messed up that approach a little bit but just because it took me so long to actually visually find him in front as I passed him though, I saw on the TWS that there were enemies in this vague direction and as you can tell I'm getting locked on RWR, which basically means I wasn't going to commit to that turn because that would then obviously give you know the enemies that were coming from that direction my 6 and I don't want that. So at this point I'm kind of trying to figure out where they are. Uh, I have a, After having a quick look over there I decide alright it's worth the risk I'm just going to try and go, go for this guy again so at least we have you know one person down and we can maybe both focus on the guys that are behind me. Uh, he actually turns into my missile, which then loses track. I end up getting him with, with guns. Well, I, I crit him with guns, and then my uh, my wingman actually ends up finishing him off. So in the next clip here, you'll notice that I'm currently under attack, or at least I'm being blocked up on RWR. And I don't, I can't really do anything apart from try and notch it. But with the way these like modern radars are now, they're actually incredibly difficult to notch. Um. And this is kind of like a problem that I have with, <laughs> with the map as well. There's like absolutely no terrain to hide around. If you're if you're in our Discord, you might have you might have seen me have like a bit of a rant about Denmark the other day. I think the less said about the rant, the better to be honest. But um, it, it, basically, the problem I have with Denmark is there's like no terrain or anything. If you're flying like Vietnam or, or most maps in general have a little bit of a terrain. Like there's some if you're getting radar lock, there might be like a little ditch or a hill or something like that or a valley you can fly into to break line of sight, right? Um, a, a little valley to fly through if you want to like sort of sneakily make your way to a base to go bomb it or something like that right but Denmark doesn't have any of that it's just the entire map is just flat one big flat plane and it just makes gameplay I think quite boring if especially look at this kind of tier where most people have incredibly good radars uh, or most planes have incredibly good radars and all it is is you find a dot on your radar and you fly towards it but anyway, I mean, there's no terrain to hide behind, so what am I doing here? I, I know there's someone, someone watching me, so what I do is I try to fly towards outside of the map a little bit, because that's generally where our, team, where our teammates are. I call that for cover, just to like sort of alert people that, you know, there's someone over here. Uh, I try and get as much distance as I can, or, or try and get as close to outside of the map before he catches me. He does catch me, I try and reverse him into the one circle. It does work, but as you can see, he's not having any of it and ends up just flaring a whole bunch and my teammate actually ends up taking him out and that's actually a very good sort of point this is what I was on about earlier like if you're aggressive enough in the vegan people a lot of the time people won't stick the fight with you because they'll see your nose come round and they'll just immediately bail because they think that you now have the advantage even though I was probably only doing about 400 knots at that point and he could have easily out energyed me but I know my teammate was there and that's, maybe that's why he was focused on I don't know as you can see, I'm getting quite a lot of other like radar pings and stuff, so there are people about. You have to sort of stay vigilant here. You have to sort of pay attention to your surroundings. I end up seeing someone on radar in a little bit here, and I see them also coming towards me. And the most important thing here in a situation like this is to just get rid of, if you have like a lot of enemies on one spot, is you want to get rid of... It sounds simple, but you want to get rid of them as quick as possible, right? So if you see someone coming towards you like this in a vegan, like here for instance, he's not really paying that much attention to me or oh, any attention to me, it's a pretty easy kill, right? And what you want to do is you want to capitalize on situations like this. If someone's not looking, you pounce on them, right? If someone's paying attention to you, sort of try and bait them a little bit because you're not, chances are you're not going to get, be able to get them in a 1v1 in this thing. Uh, and as you can see, I fired a missile off. He does see it last second, he tries to go defensive, but because we didn't lock him up until the last second, it didn't give him that much time to go defensive, and the missile does actually catch him, and he, he manages to, to just not be able to outrun it. A right, quick side note here, just watching this back in post-production, I realised that I actually locked him up like way too early, and the reason he didn't react until it was too late is because he was actually focused on someone else, so that's why that, that kill happened. Okay, bye! 
Then I see someone over here as well. And he actually fires a missile at me. I'm gonna blame that on the fact that the sun was in my eyes. Uh, so, 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 yeah. So I'll take off again, head straight back there again for revenge with my radar wide open. But uh, it looks like on the t on the kill feed, the dude actually got killed by a teammate, which is, uh, I mean, that never happens to him, right? Um, but anyway, I found a, like I find like another teammate here fighting a, an enemy, and I look at the, t uh, the kill feed again. The teammate actually kills him. So I look for another enemy to go fight, and I end up finding, finding this guy who's heading towards that teammate that just killed the uh, the other guy. So I track him in TWS, so it just so it makes it a little bit easier for the radar to sort of stay focused on him without actually alerting him to a full lock. I try and get as close as possible. I'm just going to try and ignore that lock because I'm just sort of going to wager that it's it's too far away. Uh, this dude starts chaffing. Uh, once I start locking him up, he reacts immediately, which is exactly what you should do. I end up firing a Fox 2 at him, which are uh, basically they're RB24Js, uh, by the way, so they're like, I don't know, AIM9Js, basically they're the exact same code and whatever. He ends up flaring that off. I decided to engage into a dogfight with him, but I do have to be careful just because someone is locking me, and which means someone is on the way to come help. Uh, I try and maintain as much speed as I can, that's why I'm not really turning that tightly. Trying to just pull him into the HUD a little bit here. Uh, use the ACM. I'll just get a radar lock and which uh, to to slew the uh, the side one a little bit. Uh, actually, I think that was a, a radar missile I just fired off. Yeah. Anyway, it doesn't it doesn't track for whatever reason, and I just end up gunning him down. The gun on the vegan is absolutely amazing, by the way. People complain that it doesn't get traces, but honestly, once you get used to it, this is probably one of the best guns in the game. It's like. It's kind of like the Aiden cannon or the Defas that the French get, but the velocity is a lot higher on it, so... Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, I can't explain it, I just, I really love the gun. It's in the combination of the gun sight that the Vigan has, which... Isn't actually a gun sight as far as I know, I think it's the flight path vector indicator that you're actually sort of using on the HUD, but it doesn't move, and it's just amazing, because there's no... There's none of this wibbly wobbly stuff, right, that a lot of other planes get, where it's just, you know, it's like some sort of radar gun sight, radar rangefinder gun sight that doesn't actually work properly because Gaijin doesn't know how to code this stuff. So, it's just nice to have a gun sight that just, it, it's literally just a gun sight, right? It's just a dot that shows you where your gun's going, and that's all you need, really. End up killing this MiG-29. I, I think that was the guy that was locking me up from earlier. But uh, he obviously didn't see my missile coming. I, I, I don't know what happened. Maybe someone else locked him up because he was flying a little bit weirdly. Someone fires another missile at me. I use the large caliber flares that this thing gets to make quick work of it. I uh, flare that missile off. Then I reverse again into a one circle. This guy actually sticks out for the fight. And he goes straight back up again. And I realize, okay, this is bad. I'm not going to be able to keep up with this guy. As you can see me sort of bleeding speed as I'm trying to pull pull into him here. Uh, I realised someone else was trying to kill me so I, I, I dock low to try and get a missile to fly into the ocean. It actually ends up working but now it's a 2v1. Or I should say a 2v2 but they're both going for me because there was a teammate near. And at this point this is a bit of a tricky spot so I've got to think about okay so how am I going to survive this. So I switch over to the other guy just because I felt like he was in a more advantageous position. I'm, I've pretty much accepted the fact that I'm not going to kill any of these, so I'm just going to try and sort of keep him dancing for long enough for my teammates to come in. I'll try and take a shot at this guy, but it doesn't really work. Then, you can, I mean, you can see how he just he keeps going up. I'm down at 360 knots. You just can't, you don't stand a chance. You just don't have the energy to to keep up with these, these modern 4th gens. And I look behind and I see the MiG-29 looking at me and... Yeah, I mean, I don't know how, how I could have played that, to be honest. My, both my teammates were kind of struggling to, to get shots on, but, you know, it just happens sometimes. So as you can see on the radar here, I have a whole bunch of targets to choose from, and whenever you're in a situation like this, you want to pick the one that is the biggest threat to you in that specific situation. So in this case, it would be the one that was pointing towards me, and it's also the closest to me, pretty obvious. I lock him up about, what is that, about 10 miles. I probably should have waited a little bit more, just kept him in a TWS. Because as you're going to see in a minute, he actually starts chaffing now, which break, basically breaks the lock. And and then once the lock breaks, I also get locked by a teammate of his from the right. Now, I don't actually know where he is at this point, so I'm just going to try and sort of uh, notch it a little bit, go a little bit defensive. I look over there and I do in fact see a missile that's been fired at me high altitude. So I try and go cold, stay as low as I can, 
And as you can see, it actually ends up defeating the missile as it just impacts there. Now, uh, I'm going to go cold. I'm going to do the same thing. I know that's a MiG-29 up there. But I'm going to do the same thing as earlier. I'm just going to try and pull him back a little bit towards our side of the map, towards where our teammates are. And then I'm going to just basically turn into him now once he gets a little bit too close. And here I see he's actually closed the gap quite quickly. And I also need to worry about the other guy that I was locking earlier, that chaff, because he actually flew over my cockpit as I went left to dodge the missile from the MiG-29. Um, I turn in. I see what I think was the MiG-23 that I was locking earlier. So I try and get him. He turns away. He flies quite low. I, f I fire an RB-71 at him. He ends up flying low enough so it actually trashes the missile. I flip switch over to Fox 2s and that actually ends up getting him. I don't know. He probably just ran out of, chaff, uh, ran out of flares or something because that thing only gets about 12 flares. So here I'm just trying to like sort of assess the situation. I'm trying to find the guy who is actually locking me. And I end up seeing him over there. And so I end up turning around to force try and force a head on. It works. There's a guy only like a couple miles in front of me, but he's rear aspect, so I, I prioritize the one that's a little bit further away. Uh, but he's heading towards me, which makes him a more dangerous target. I track him TWS for a little bit just before locking, and then I try to lock him up in the last second, which I do right here. Try and find a radar. You can actually see the missile you fired at me. Just fly past the screen there. Um, I fired a missile at very close range. I try and duck down in case he fires one back. Actually ends up missing. And I see a guy in front of me there as well. So I turn sort of halfway with him into a one circle here. But I've got to be careful because if I would have kept turning there, I would have given this guy that ends up being in front of me here uh, my six o'clock. So I don't turn all the way. Now I merge with this guy. I basically up to the one circle again, actually get a really good gunshot there, and now I've got to focus back onto the guy that I was originally, originally fighting. So I hope I'm not being too fast with like explaining all of this, but um, basically the gist of it is if you're fighting multiple people, you have to have your eyes absolutely everywhere. You can't just stay focused on the one guy. You can't tunnel vision people because you could, you know, you're going to get burned essentially. So I end up merging with this guy. I follow him into the vertical, which I probably shouldn't have done because I didn't have the airspeed for it. And as you can see, now I'm down at like 300 knots and I follow him into yet another vertical. So now I'm in a really bad spot. He has more energy than I do. I am behind him, but I'm also up at 10,000 feet with no chaff and I'm being locked up by something. So I make the decision to, okay, I'm not going to end up getting that guy because my energy is just way too low. I'm going to use the altitude that I have to dive down, get as much speed as I can. I still have almost all of my flares, so I'm pretty confident I could flare off a couple of missiles at this guy which uh, fire at me, because obviously me running away would give him my 6 o'clock. And as you can see, he does fire a missile at me. I flare it off pretty easily because these are large caliber flares. Teammate runs in. I'm hoping he can sort of do something, so I actually end up turning back into the fight here. Now that I've seen that a teammate is there and I'm not here by myself, so it's not a 1v2 or anything like that. Now at this point I've actually lost the guy that was trying to kill me, and I'm pretty sure my teammate was dealing with him anyway. So I end up just looking for a bunch of new targets, so I end up just looking for new targets. And I find someone pretty close to me here, low to the ground, flying across my screen. And I also see someone with smoke up ahead. And the reason I didn't go for the guy that was closer is because he was actually flying towards our side of the map. And in this situation, I'm not under threat. And following that guy, because I only have short range missiles, by the way. Uh, I don't have M9Ls or anything. Would have dragged me away from the fight too much. So I want to stay aggressive. I want to keep putting the pressure on. I go for the guy that's smoking for some reason. Um, I also fire another missile at, at someone passing him. So I get the guy that had the smoke on. The other guy manages to flare off the missile. Now, he's quite slow. He tries to get... He, he, he knows that I'm here. He tries to get me into a dogfight. He also tries to get me to overshoot. I notice this, that I'm, it's going to work as well. So I end up doubling down. Put on full burner. Try to use a little bit of the vertical and basically just come round for another pass. Because as you can see now, he's got like no energy, pretty much. So it's pretty easy picking. If I had just pulled the air brakes there, there's a good chance I would have still been in front, but had a lot less energy. So... I come around here, I try not to black out, he starts pre-flaring, but it's not going to matter because I just end up getting him down pretty easily. Now at this point I realise I've only got one missile left, and I'm getting pretty low on fuel as well. So I point my nose back home to start heading over there, and then I realise I actually have a 6 and someone's fired a missile at me. So I end up flaring that off pretty easily, uh, I identify it as a MiG-23. I tried to bait him into like a rolling scissors, he's quite far back there, so I wasn't sure if it was going to work or not. But it looks like he's basically just pinned his afterburner down, so he actually ends up shooting in front of me. 
completely messes up his maneuver and flares it up a bit. But uh, yeah, I end up shooting him. This is pretty bad accuracy on my part here, so I apologize. But um, I do end up getting him. And now I realize, okay, I really need to go back because I'm down 16 minutes of fuel. The vegan has insane fuel burn on full afterburner, which is what you actually need to be on for a, in a, to be able to stand a chance in a dogfight. I use the altitude that I have to try and gain as much speed as I can. Start heading home. I check 6 because I know there is someone actually chasing me. I, I'm pretty sure it's a MiG-29 as well. So I try to... He is going to catch me eventually. I'm just going to try and sort of drag him as much into our territory as possible. Just like I did with the the last two times I said it. <laughs> um, he is going to catch me eventually. As you can see he's getting pretty close here. He's basically getting within missile range. I call out for cover hoping for anyone to come help. So I end up pre flaming a little bit just because he's sort of gone outside of my view. Just in case he wants to fire a missile, he then fires one. I end up flaring that one off. I get him into like a little bit of a rolling scissors here. He does overshoot, but he just manages to stay outside of my gun sight. Now, I'm in a pretty good spot here. I'm low on energy, but I'm sitting inside of his turn circle. I, I don't quite have the energy to actually sort of pull enough lead to to enable me to get a gunshot but I can tell you from his perspective this is quite scary now because he knows that I can pull a bunch of AOA what he's doing he's pre-flaring because he probably knows his teammates about now he keeps continuing into that rate fight I know I'm not going to be able to keep up with that so what I do is I use the little bit of altitude that I do have to try and gain as much speed back as I can um, extend, I extend a little bit and then I basically flip round. He does fire a missile but I flare that off pretty easily. He does actually maintain the turn instead of like going into the head, forcing the head on with me because I guess he was worried that the F-16 was going to get him. I end up sort of taking some pot shots at him. I don't, I don't lead it enough so I, I'm kind of counting on the F-16 to actually get him here. And as you can see he actually does end up setting him on fire. So now I really need to go home. I'm being locked again, but I don't see him anywhere behind me, so I'm pretty confident that they're still at least 10 miles out. So I just go full burner. I'm pretty low on fuel, but I am not too far away from my airbase. I go full burner and just try and get back to base as quick as possible. So I make it back to base, and right after takeoff, me and the person I was playing with, we decided to actually just circle the runway for like a couple seconds and wait for this, uh, for this F-16 guy that we were playing with to take off. And lo and behold, I actually see the Rollins shooting at something, and it turns out it's a MiG-29 attacking people that are taking off from our runway. Now, obviously, this is a very, very, very naughty thing to do, and you should never be doing stuff like this, but he actually ends up doing like another loop around. I thought he was just going to run away. So I decided, hmm, okay, I'm going to try locking this guy up on radar and fire a RB-74 at him. I opt to fire an RB-74 because, or an RB-71 I think it is. Um, I opt to fire a radar missile at him because in case he did see me it would have been pretty easy to flay that missile off. But yeah, I don't think he ended up, ended up seeing it anyway. But so the, the missile ends up connecting and punishing him for being very 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 naughty attacking us while we're taking off. So at this point in the game, basically most of the people have left. The game's almost over. I think the enemy team only had like five players left or something, and we only had like three, I think. So we were heading over to the A point, or where the A point was. And I end up getting locked, so I don't actually see him on radar, which basically indicates to me that he's quite high up, and I don't really want to point my nose up. So I end up trying to notch him, go a little bit defensive. He loses the radar lock for whatever reason. Uh, I see a missile up there between the clouds. He seems to have lost interest in me, which is something that actually happens quite a lot, I find, with players that are like a little bit maybe like newer to the game or newer to like radar mechanics and stuff like that. Because just because you've lost someone off radar doesn't necessarily mean that they've disappeared, right? It just means you've lost them off radar. So he ends up going for this F-14. Uh, he doesn't pay attention to me. I lock him up. I get nice and close, come from below. I think at this point he sort of realises it. I fire a missile, he tries to go defensive, flares a whole bunch, but my missile still connects. And that's why you should always, if you're going to lock someone up, make sure you actually kill them. So yeah, that's it. That was the end of the game. Um, for anyone that's interested, I, th I think my final score was 15 to 3, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, I mean, as you can see, the, y you definitely can still make the vegan work, but you can make anything work, really, right? Except for, like, an F4C or something. But my point is, I mean, you saw in this gameplay, I had... At, well, at the start of it, I was actually had... I was working with two other people, and then towards, like, sort of the end, I, I only had, like, one other person with me. It, it... You're very, very reliant on your teammates, because you basically just don't have the ability to 1v1 anyone. 
because especially not something like a MiG-23 uh, or a MiG-29 or you know like an F-16 or something or even a Tomcat if it's flown correctly so you're very reliant on your teammates and if you don't have any teammates I would honestly just recommend to not play Denmark because if you don't have teammates to tactic it's to actually hide and ambush people and stuff like that so if you if you fly if you want to fly the vegan I would highly recommend maps like Vietnam um, Spain's also quite a good one Rocky Canyon I'm not too sure because the problem with the with the Vigan is it actually loses a lot of performance above 10,000 feet so if you take this into a map like Afghanistan or something like that you're just not going to do that well because simply you, you you lack the engine power so try and fly this on maps like Vietnam you can take this into smaller maps as well like Port Moresby is a really good one um, but I'd stay away from maps like Tunisia, Denmark you know just like the really really flat maps that have like no terrain because you essentially you need to hide in this thing in order to survive a top tier but I hope you found this video informative, I hope you found it entertaining. Uh, if you're struggling with the vegan or if you're looking to get into flying it, uh, I I hope you could take one or two things away from this video. I haven't flown the new one yet because I do have it but I just haven't spaded it yet and I, I think with the aimline L's and the you know the increased flare count, yeah you probably will be able to be do a little bit better, it's definitely a little bit more potent the, the, as a package but to be honest with you it's the performance that lets this thing down really, um, you know when people can just flare off your missiles it's down to guns right, it's down to flight performance and guns and this thing just doesn't it just doesn't have it against the F-16 and the MiG-29. So yeah, definitely still possible. It's still a fun plane to fly, but don't expect to win any like tournaments with it or whatever. So uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye.